opportunity uh, to talk about Newtonal Kung Fu Body. Well, as you know, at the, the coming conference, there will be the uh, experts in this theory. So it's, uh, I'm so happy that I can present the introduction so you can uh, think about all these difficult questions to ask them. <laughs> so by the way, so uh, some people t call the things we will study Okunkov body, uh, but I believe uh, Hovanski and uh, Kave, they really want to emphasize that this one should be Newton or Kunkov body. So some people call nobody and this is what I <laughs> coined. But uh, nobody doesn't sound good to me. Oh my god, I forgot that. Yeah. But anyway, so nobody is not standard. That's my point. That I just uh, use this one because it's pretty long. But I want to keep Newton as well in this uh, convex body. So Newton or Kunkov body theory, the, uh, the fundamental principle is very uh, well known approach to study in mathematics. Basically, suppose you have your object, whatever object is, you want to uh, attach a certain combinatorial object to your original study and you want to uh, get some information coming from combinatorics. So for example, the well-known example is the toric geometry. Right? So in toric geometry, A will be a toric variety with a given Cartier divisor. say D, then the combinatorial counterpart is so-called the Newton polytope. Usually we denote by P sub D. So in symplectic geometry, uh, some people uh, look at this object as the moment polytope. Uh, so in toric geometry, this assignment is somehow perfect, which means you have nice way to come back to toric geometry. So So recently, uh, tropical geometry is, has been developed. And in tropical geometry, the object to study is so called a very, op a very affine variety. A very fine means it's a sub-variety of a certain any algebraic torus. So any sub-variety of a given algebraic torus we call very fine variety. And in this case, uh, the combinatorial counterpart is a tropicalization of that variety and this is a certain fan in this lecture series I'm not going into this tropical geometry I just introduced uh, so the topic of our study is the neutral kunko body theory So in this case, the our the uh, the object we want we are interested in is uh, 
It could be semi-group, purely a fine semi-group, or it could be a certain algebra, or it could be a linear series. On a variety. So this is the topic of our studies. So for each of them, we will assign a certain convex body. By the way, the main references for this lecture series are the following. So it's KK12 is written by Kave and Hovansky. Uh, Newton Okunko bodies of Newton Okunko bodies and semi groups. Sorry, Newton Okunko bodies of semi groups and keep going. And another one is written by L.M. Lazarsfeld Mustata. Convex bodies associated to linear series. So for the introduction, our main reference is this paper. And later, for a certain application to Bas-Samuelson variety, we will take this approach. So the, uh, the original motivation to this convex body theory came from a representation theory. reductive algebraic groups. If we have some time left, I will go into this, uh, this approach from the representation theory. However, so uh, in, in this approach from representation theory, uh, people constructed a convex body for a uh, group variety. However, the main key point, uh, the key observation, by uh, Lazarsfeld and Mustata and Kave and Hovansky is that we really don't need group action to build Newton Okunko body. So for a while, for s some time, we will study how to get a convex bo body from a given uh, choice of object. However, uh, I just want to warn you, uh, the construction of a convex body is very subtle. It's not canonical. Lots of choices are needed. So, uh, I mean, this is a very nice question uh, to get a very explicit construction. The example of convex body, however, also you shouldn't forget just 
the existence of a certain such convex body is also a powerful fact. So, uh, uh, okay. so in general, lobby can be very subtle. However, I just don't want you to uh, forget this uh, during our technical construction. So however, don't forget the, the existence such convex body is also powerful fact. So somehow we can see this one as an exist existence the existent theory. Any question? So, we are going to study this arrow. Uh, also, so just want to mention that, uh, you know, again, so the reason we uh, constructed such combinatorial object is we want to study our A. So, you know, so. So in tropical geometry, these sort of problems are called a lifting problem. And also, you can think about uh, this arrow as well, right there. So you can think about lots of questions in this approach. So, so you got some uh, information and what, what are they, what do they mean in terms of A? Okay. So, okay. This direction is an association, the other direction is an Yes, uh, so in tropical geometry, this is somehow, tropicalization is somehow shadow of your object. And the shadow uh, ignores lots of things, but still you get something. So by looking at the shadow, uh, you try to imagine Yes, or a shadow is on the ground, and you, you really need can reconst reconstruct our three-dimensional object. But that's uh, my just a viewpoint. Of course, it's uh, so uh, and, mm, not, not precise. Oh, not object is easy to understand. Yes. <laughs> so yes, so this is a really well-known approach of, of mathematics. And so from there, we, so we will study this arrow from, uh, from semi-group to convex body. And uh, this arrow will be really, really elementary. It's really all about semi-group. So the key result in this paper, well, what I mean by the key result, this is the, this is the very, very simple uh, result and this one will just tell give us so many applications in uh, in a very uh, difficult uh, situations so the so-called approximation of a semi group by its regularization. And well, this is a uh, in theorem 1.6. Okay. 
if you want to see more details, you can look at the paper. So, here's the setting. So we have a semi-group in a given lattice in a given vector space. Okay. So it's a semi-group. So for example, oh, I think I can draw here. Is it okay if I draw here? Yeah. Sure. So for example, uh, let's look at the graph of this function. I mean, R, we, are in, uh, we are looking at R2. And just draw the graph of y equals x axis and y axis and y equals the absolute value of x half okay. and we, we consider all the lattice points above this graph so, so we have all the lattice points above it. Because of, the, because of the convexity here, the lattice points above is a semigroup. The semigroup closed by addition. Yes. But as you can see, may not be finite generated. So suppose you have this semigroup. And well, you, so you can uh, compare this one with a very simple one, right? So, so namely, graph of the absolute value. Then you can do the lattice points above this graph as well. This is nice. Uh, sorry. Yeah. That one is also another semi group. So the regularization of the semi group is a one polytopal object. So regularization of S is by definition you take the closed cone containing the semigroup and intersect this with the group generated by the semigroup. Okay. So both case the group generated by S for the is Z2 yeah. because it has 0, 1 and it has 1, 1 so the, 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 sorry. the group generated by these two points is Z2 all the lattice points okay. and the cone of S is so we have S but because it goes like this slope the cone of S will be the upper half plane. Oh, sorry, R. Sorry, I can write down like this. Why right? isn't it named? The upper half plane. Yes. The cone. The cone, the co closed cone containing the semigroup. So here, here, obvious, right? The group of S is Z2 and the cone of S is nothing but this, right? The one you see. Strongly, uh, strictly convex. But here, 
What is the cone? You have to take all the positive ray, right? But then this one goes this way. So the, if you go further, further, there is a cert still uh, certain point, and you have to consider all these positive rays. So maybe I put it too, too higher. Maybe it goes like this. So, so by definition, this is the closure of the union of all the positive rays spanned by all the points. Yeah. So, well, if you draw like that, and you yeah. end up having a upper half plane. So here, regularization of S will be the, all the lattice points uh, above the x-axis. Z cross. This is the cone. So the regularization of S. Here, well, it's very obvious. All the lattice points inside of the cone. So it is the it is the semi group generated by on this first level. Yeah. So I think we understand. So here, actually. Uh, the semigroup S is so clear. We can con we know we understand the behavior of the semigroup. So in this case, the regular S is same as the S. Yes, yes, that's yes, 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 yes. Something exactly the same. Yes. So the first example somehow shows us the regularization of S and S are very dif different from each other. However, the, the, the theorem says, well, not exactly. So we can approximate S by the regularization of S in this sense. So, so you just take any cone contained in the cone of S. So please think, just so look. Sorry? The cone point. Uh, so what you mean? Uh, in topology, when you say you, you, you are taking uh, cone, you yes. have some, some cone from, from the universe yes, and then yes. you take it back here. Yes. The cone point is zero, so it's the, the origin. Oh, well, my, all my uh, terminology is coming from polytopal geometry. So what I mean, is, so if you have any set, any set, cone of S, you can think this way, cone of uh, S is the, you take all the um, positive array generated by V in V and S so. and take the closure. I, I want to have a closed cone. Okay, so we say cone point. Uh, cone point. Con is con the origin. The ah, <laughs> uh, here, here, uh, this one is not pointed, right? It's not pointed. It's mm. not pointed. Uh huh. I see. So in torque geometry, this one is a strictly convex cone, and this one is not strictly convex. So, yes. Yeah, so, so that that's what I mean by the cone generated by S. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes, and then today everything will be Euclidean geometry. Yeah. Will be in R two R three. Yeah. So take any cone, or well not any cone, but a uh, closed, strictly convex cone. Intersecting the boundary of uh, cone of S only at the origin. So just take any cone. So, for example, here. Well, here you don't have a much choice, right? You can have any cone inside of this. But this one, well, we don't really need to consider this one. Obviously, regularization and S is the same. So it's really about this. So take uh, any cone. So let's have uh, Take any 
方式食，我只系会得。You just choose any. You just pick any corn, strictly convex, which means it does not contain any linear space. Containing the corn over S and the, with the boundary condition, then, then there exists a constant that depends. Depending on your choice of the corn C, such that for all x inside of regular uh, G of S in S, which is uh, somehow far away from the origin, the distance from the origin is greater than n, then this point should be in S. So, so here, what does it mean? This one actually, uh, not really. Well, so if you take any point inside of your choice of C, and also that is in the lattice point, if it's far away, that one actually in our S. But this one actually, I. Well, if you go further than this height, that's true. Suppose you have the cone like that. There's a lot of points seems to be not in S. But if you go far away, yeah. you will really touch, right? If you go far away and pick any point in C, of course, that is in group G, then it's guaranteed to be in S. Well, uh, if that's not clear, you can think about just one dimensional one. Sorry, I should just. It's so one dimensional one, so suppose zero, and my, my semi group is just uh, spanned by two and three. So I miss the point one, but I have a two. Three, if we generate by two, three, and you keep going four and five. So that's the uh, my semi group. Then G of S is actually everything, right? So it will it will choose one. And if you go further than just uh, one, actually one. If you're further than two, every point in G should have been S. Right? Is this a normal step or? This is the Q result. Uh, by the way, is this a statement of the Q result? Oh yes, this is a this is a one this is a theorem one point six. So that's the key statement. Oh well, I okay. The the um, the presentation the significance of the the paper is not this one, but this is the uh, my impression about this paper is that. This theorem is beautiful and simple. Nothing but this Euclidean geometry. However, from this result, using this Newton-Okunkov body theory, it has so many applications about this Brun-Minkowski simple proof of Brun-Minkowski inequality and keeps going. So this paper uh, shows like at least like five applications for these very uh, complicating theorems in mathematics. So it's really coming from all about, and uh, everything is coming from this observation. Yes. Um, How long is the, is the proof? Oh, the, 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 the proof is very elementary too. It's, uh, it's not difficult. It's, uh, as you can guess, it's very elementary as well. No, um, yes. Well, uh, let me introduce you uh, so as a warming up. By the way, you can talk to me in Korean, and I can translate in English as well. So don't worry about it. Yes, please, please, please talk. Yeah, you, you can ask me in Korean. Yes. So, uh, 
Uh, I think this will be nice uh, to study this picture a little longer. There are two observations, two more observations which uh, are used to prove this theorem and one of them is following. I can just show you this. Suppose you have two cones. One is inside of the other. Suppose you have a right, cone and you have uh, another cone. Uh, again, a mine is always closed to convex cone by the, by the definition. Okay. So, so I have like this. Mm. Okay, and then the boundary condition. They only intersect at the, uh, at the origin. And uh, what you do is you just shift the well you, you, ju you just shift these uh, the big cone into any direction so it can be outside or inside uh, so let's say say this is a, a one point and you just shift the origin to this one okay I am just uh, <coughs> shifting Just the shifting. <coughs> so what happened is that uh, this shifted cone will contain all the points in this yellow cone if you go far enough. Just because of the angle in two-dimensional way. Right? So that is also the key observation to uh, prove this. So, okay. If the graph is, mm. this is a concave graph. If mm -hmm. convex graph, then it's not, it's not semi semi group. No, no. That's, oh. that's probably the, so the one of the key reasons is that mm. the graph is mm -hmm. being a semi group. Yes. So, the, the reason is that, that that cone is really coming from semi-group. Uh, semi yes. So there is a there is a group structure. There is addition, additive structure. Yes. Kay. Yes. So the first uh, application is still we are in the semi-group. Nothing about algebraic geometry. with the number of points in the semi-group S. See, whenever we talk about the semi-group, you can think about this one. Everything will be really just uh, trivial for this um, finite generated semi-group in a given direction. So what do we mean by this? Okay, let's, okay, let's go back to the semi-group. Well, 
Well, so we want to count the number of semi-groups cutting by level. So, what, so in a given direction, so I want to count the number of points in the semi-group in this vertical direction. So on the level one, we have three, right? So, uh, so I just want to formalize. Yeah, well, yeah, well. What is the notation? So the number of semi-groups on the height k, in this case, is 2k squared plus 1. Just to use this formula. So, yes, let's compare it. I'm supposed to draw a small way. What was the other one? What's this? Y equals the absolute value of X. Yeah, so in this case, the number of S, the number of points on the, on the height K is what? 2K plus 1. So the asymptote, asymptotic, so we, we let K goes to infinity. Right. And the number of s k, and we divide by, so we normalize. Otherwise, it's just infinity, right? So k to the the, the power one, and here we do the exact the same thing. Yeah. So number of s k, which is uh, actually just a two. Sorry. But in this case, it's infinity. And just note that this number two is, is really detected by the level one. Well, in this case, it's the semi-group is generated by the level one, right? So if you consider the uh, the what is it? Con the convex hull of these three points. This is really the integral volume. The integral volume of this delta one. Let me just use that. I am just using the notation we will define later. Okay. But what about here? Okay. Remember the cone was the old upper half plane. So the level, if you cut the upper half plane by the uh, hyper, uh, the line on the level one, it is the infinite line, so it's actually the same. I'm going just, sorry. What I'm trying to show you is that this asymptotic of the number of points in this semi-group. So in this case, volume delta S is what? Yes. So I, w I will I will show you. I will I will tell uh, what I'm trying to say. You will define what delta is. Yes. Delta. Yes. Yes. So just from this example, uh, here for this simple case, the cone of S was this, and you cut this cone by the hyper. What is just the line on the level one? You will then th the intersection is delta over s. That's the definition, and the integral volume of that is actually equal to the asymptotic. Here, the same thing. The cone was all upper half plane, oh, right? And then you cut that one by the line one. You get infinite line. So the volume is still infinity. Yes. We're almost there. So what I'm going to write down here, just formalizing our old observation. Okay. So okay. so, for, so semi-group is fixed. And so what we want to do is we want to count the number of points in S in a given direction. So to uh, to choose a, the direction, I am uh, 
fixing a half plane. So the M is a rational, so a rational half space containing the semigroup. So here, basically, I chose this just upper half plane. So uh, for those who want to, what do you mean by rational? Oh, the the slope, the half space is defined by linear inequality. So it's given by rational yeah. linear equal. Yes, the slope is rational. Yeah. So again, here you don't really have to count the number of uh, points in this direction, right? So you can just. Do think about another half space and you can count this way but what I really want to have is a rational slope yeah. so th for those who want to read KK so they call the situation as M admissible pair so you just fix a admissible pair, and now what we I want to is just I want to define the height here. Obviously, level one, level two, level three, right? So, so just take a projection. Well, actually, this one should be the linear space spanned by the semi-group, but. Uh, for simplicity, I assume that that is equal to that. Sorry. So L of S is by definition the uh, linear subspace of uh, the ambient space spanned by S. It's just for simplicity, I uh, just assume it's a whole linear space. Okay, so now it's a linear function kernel of pi m is just the boundary of m. I'm just formalizing everything for the height. And it's what we want the integral. just about your yeah, level function or some people the height function yeah. and now uh, SK we denote by SK for the number of lattice points I'm sorry the number of points in S on the level K okay. just for later I we introduce one more notation. So this is a function on the the set of integers. So that is just nothing but the number, the uh, the cardinality of S K. So it's this one, it's the number of number of points in the semigroup on the level K. And then we call this one as the Hilbert, the Hilbert. Hilbert function for the semigroup. Remember, it comes with a choice of half space. So, if you choose another rational half space, maybe the level one could it be empty set. Right? Suppose I have a semigroup from just starting 2, 4, 6, 8, and 11. No, I mean, suppose it has like a bigger lattice, then the volume will not really uh, says the correct volume. So we have to adjust by this lattice, the index. So let me, so M denote the, the index of this sub lattice.
now. So this is up to here, this is the setting to make it precise. What do we mean by the num counting the number of points in S in a certain direction? So now, delta of SM is by definition, so you intersect the cone of S with this half plane. Again, so this we took by four M. Yes, it's coming from the definition. So, so M M depends on the small M depends on the big M. Also on this, uh, of course. Or yes, yes, yes. Of course, yes. So if the semi group is sparsely spaced, then, then you have bigger M. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So is it clear up to this what we did? We just come to this convex set. As you can see, this is a least convex set. I mean set, which is convex. That's what I mean. So here we have a convex set, which is not compact. Here we have a convex set, which is compact. So compact convex set is, by definition, convex body. So uh, in, in KK paper, Convex body is by definition compact convex set, and LM's paper they put extra um, definition. They want to have non empty interior. So, um, just want to uh, let you know I mean, for those who are reading these two papers and wonder uh, the difference. So, at least this is convex set, and uh, this is called the Newton. Open curve convex set. Okay. Well, so actually, I, I just gave you the uh, what is the, uh, the the convex body after this tilted arrow. So in this case, we will have convex body. Okay. Uh, just want we want to assume that uh, that. Uh, H of K is always finite for all K. Otherwise, the asymptotic is just clear. At, at, at certain, there, at, after a, s a fixed constant, the asymptotic behavior just clear is infinity. So, uh, okay, what I mean is that. H K is always uh, less than, is finite. Yeah, that's that my. That means it's a convex. Said, hmm. but it is, it is compact. No, no, no. This is still finite. For each level, it is a finite number. No, HK is what? HK is the number of. Uh, S, okay, uh, uh, yes, yes, yes. So, so the whole of S is the same. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The reason I'm just assuming this is that uh, if H of K is infinity, a certain point, the number of uh, the number of uh, the number of points is infinity. Then uh, for some k, then there exists n uh, such that uh, if m k is greater than n, then h of m k is just always infinity. So, so the asymptotic will just obviously uh, infinity. So, okay. okay, here are the collection of theorems.
Uh, oh yes, you you may. Uh, but we should it it should contain s. Yes, admissible pair. You are allowed to get admissible pair. Mm. Okay, we want to. So all about uh, our main interest is nothing but counting the number of points in s. Mm. But this, if, if mm. you have a different uh -huh. plane here, uh -huh. then it does not contain s. Yes. So this one. Uh, For this one, actually, this is the only. Uh, in this case, yes. In this case, yes. And actually, in you know, all this algebraic geometry, um, as you will see, the algebraic geometry application will be nothing but this upper half plane. So from the construction, but uh, I think this is worthy to think about. Uh, just purely polytopal. Uh, so um, yeah. If you have a semi-group, mm. don't, don't think about any other things. Semi-group, mm. then you can construct a convex set. Convex okay. set, yes, yes. And? And, and, and if you have a huh. semi-group semi and a half plane M, huh. then this Yes, yes. And uh, so when is a convex body, right? So we can, we can call this a uh, neutral concave body. Convex body means it's, it's, it's a um, convex and compact. Yes, compact, convex set. Okay. Some paper also require that the sorry the relative interior of that is not empty. So here we don't, we don't. Uh, okay, sorry, sorry, now relative interior, just interior, so. Interior in where? Uh, yes, uh, Okay, so here I, okay, we are in this L of S, L of S, and you cut by this half plane. So in this half plane, uh, we want, some paper want to have non-empty in here, which means you really want to have full dimensional convex body. Okay. That, but uh, we don't require that. Okay? So. This is an mm. interior of delta S M inside M or inside uh, uh, of K, the uh, uh, what is the K? Yes, half plane. Half plane. Yes, yes. K, K, uh, uh. So M M half. Or half. yes, or you can say that the dimension of the convex body is the 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 the, the maximal possible. So several way to say. Uh, so. But we do not require that. Okay. So it's a convex body if and only if uh, that admissible pair is a strongly admissible. That is the cone of S is strictly convex and intersects sex the boundary of M only at the origin. So the first one fails it. So it's, it's really uh, illustrate the second example.
But this observation is very uh, clear, polytopoly. As the professor so mentioned, pointed out, this is really nothing but semigroup. There's nothing else, right? No algebraic actually. If you have a semigroup and you choose a half plane, half space, then you get a convex set. And it's a convex body. If and only if it has this nice polytopal property. Now, if it is strongly admissible, they correlate 1.16, okay? Says this one really, the volume of that convex body really tells us the asymptotic behavior of the uh, Hilbert function. So H of M K over K to the power Q. So here Q is the dimension of the convex, convex body. So now Newton of Kunkov body. is equal to the volume, the, so the Q integral volume of this convex, the nobi, divided by, again we have to adjust this one by a certain lattice, uh, index. Yeah, what I mean is just the index. the lattice, sorry, the index of the sub-lattice. Okay. So usually uh, by choosing nice lattice, this all index will become one. Okay, so So just a notation, right? So this is a Hilbert function, which means it's nothing but the uh, the number of uh, points in S on the level M K, and then it's a convex body, but then it's finite. So this this one has lo lots of things. This one says the left hand side converges, first of all and converges to a the volume of a certain polytope. Oh, I'm sorry, not polytope, convex body. So therefore, we, uh, sometimes we say S has a bounded growth. So it means there exists a subsequence of this sequence which goes to always finite, it goes to a finite number. So now this one, we can uh, consider this one as a certain algebraic property. We start from a semigroup and uh, the semigroup has a bounded growth. So it tells us the, um, the Hilbert function. Now, Theorem, another theorem says actually that algebraic property sorry, let me just erase implies this. Just theorem 1.18. This um, so let's observe uh, what uh, think let's think about what this means. Suppose you have a semigroup and you have you have some inf you have some information about the semigroup and you know that semigroup has bounded growth. Then using I understand. Theorem 1.8 implies what? 
Oh, this simple like that. So this, if oh, this. If this is a bounded growth, mm. then this is the bound convex value. Mm -hmm. Let's do the if and only if. Yes, there are like a three, uh, three claims or four claims, and I uh, combine them together here. Okay, so, so for example, if your semigroup coming from, uh, we'll see semigroup coming from this uh, homogeneous coordinate ring of algebraic variety, then you know the homogeneous co homogeneous coordinate ring has a Hilbert function which you approximate Hilbert polynomial. So definitely we'll have a uh, boundary growth. From there you see uh, the, com the convex set is a convex body. So on, on, on the other hand, if you have some nice information about your convex set, neutral concave convex set, and you know that should be compact, then you can induce this property for semigroup, and vice versa. So. Uh, so using these two uh, approaches, uh, so they could uh, have uh, very uh, simpler proofs for this uh, well-known theorem. So if we have a function which satisfies this uh, uh, bounded growth, uh -huh. right? uh -huh. starting from H, then can you construct a semigroup S? Oh. And then yeah. uh -huh. then uh, out of that, you get a convex value, or that's that's too strong. <laughs> no, I'm, that's like, yeah, it depends on what you are interested in, right? But that's that's very nice and uh, nice to think. If you have a, if you have a certain function satisfying this one, then you cook up a no, semi group. That's the that this limit is finite. Ah, uh, finite. Yeah, so you have a, you have a sequence. So, th so that's one. E Given a sequence, then boundary. So, yeah, so you, you have, have a sequence. You have a function from Z to Z, uh -huh. which has a bounded growth. Bounded growth. Can we find a semi-group? Semi-group. Who's that is fine, that volume? This is this, and then there, so that the convex body it, it has a convex body. So that is somehow. Can you characterize this right. convex by, by set? Uh, by, uh, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm. Uh, I'm not sure if someone did. Uh, but that's. Some people are working on the characterization of convex bodies, uh, neutral concave convex bodies, and uh, it's all done for surface. I mean, for dimension two, I believe, but I don't know for higher dimension. Again, um, this convex body can be very, very not polytopal, could it be? We, what we know is it's a convex body. Doesn't have to be rational. Doesn't have to be polytop. Okay, uh, and theorem 119 is actually s just um, this identity holds also for non-compact one. It's like that. So the, the left, left hand side and right hand side, uh, both are, of are infinite. So, so theorem one point nineteen is this uh, generalization of this uh, identity. Okay. So now, finally, we want to talk about uh, something uh, algebraic geometry. So before that. Uh, so the second application is about asymptotic for uh, algebra. Uh, so yes. So asymptotic of number of points is really about a Hilbert function. Polynomial growth of the Hilbert function of graded 
algebra. Well, this is well known for finite generated created algebra. So obviously this is for not necessarily finite generated. And more again uh, and so what is known for finite uh, what is known for finite So if you if you uh, So the great I mean the polynomial function is uh, it's a function which associates to each k is a is a dimension of each. each, mm -hmm. each so the Hilbert function. So if you have a uh, well, ring. Yes, if you have graded ring, a uh, graded algebra, graded by a uh, n ring. So k is in, in the mm -hmm. Then the Hilbert function is by definition the is the dimension. dimension. Okay, sorry, this is, uh, you can think of a C graded algebra, okay? You need a field, okay? So it's a vector space, right? Then, and then, then if it's finite generated, then uh, S, uh, H of K is uh, equal to a certain polynomial for So it's, this is called a Hilbert polynomial. So this is, yeah, yeah. Yes, and then the, the degree of this Hilbert, sorry, so if, if this one is a homogeneous coordinate ring for uh, a projective variety, right, then the degree of uh, P is the dimension of X, and then the leading coefficient, sorry, I can do it like that, right? So it's a polynomial, so you can write down like this. Uh, AQ polynomial T2 K2 carry. So I, I want to just keep the uh, smaller term. Then okay. the Q is the dimension of X. And then a q over I'm always confused is k vector. Okay. Sorry. The leading coefficient multiplied by q factorial, sorry. A q leading coefficient times q factorial is equal to the degree of x. Just a basic uh, and an algebraic geometry. <coughs> yeah. Forward. Uh, so the idea, I may I may come back to this later. So, so just yeah. So you don't have to worry about the algebraic geometry yet. So suppose you have just graded algebra. Or you, or you have just algebra, any algebra. Well, actually, to think of a polynomial, the Hilbert function, you need a grading. That's why I put that as uh, adjective. But so what is the idea? So it's a conversion from algebra to semigroup. So that's uh, one uh, natural idea. By the way, so uh, 
I just don't want to underestimate uh, the paper. But this is this is the the second application, but the main applications again they have a Bruminkowski inequality for a growth coefi coefficient abstract version of the Fujita approximation theory and an intersection theory. It goes further the paper. That's why I call it introduction. Yeah. So, so how can we come make conversion from algebra to semigroup? So this conversion will be done by a choice of valuation and because uh, in classical uh, sense valuation is not the classical valuation some people call this multi-valued okay. well, before going to going into the details about this conversion that's what we are going to do. This, this conversion, which obviously depends on the choice of valuation, is very, very subtle. 